Coming up, a momentous meeting in Birmingham between two survivors of Taliban terrorism. That's our top story in a few minutes' time. Now the latest ITV News Central with Matt Teal and Samina Ali Khan. Hello there, welcome to the programme. Coming up this evening, a momentous meeting between two survivors of Taliban terrorism, both given life-changing treatment in Birmingham. Uh, get dreams like the terrorists again came and they are shooting us. Many of my friends died uh, and uh, this was very horrible. Rape reporting to West Midlands police increases by 25% in 12 months. <laughs> And on the ground with our troops, keeping the peace in Cyprus. Good evening. A Pakistani boy who was treated in Birmingham after being shot in the Taliban's deadliest attack on a school has met Malala Yousafzai at his new Midlands home. 15-year-old Ahmed Nawaz was seriously wounded in the attack in Peshawar in which 141 pupils and teachers died. Well, like Malala, he was flown to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. In an exclusive interview for ITV, he says he won't let the terrorists stop him learning. Nancy Cole reports. A meeting of two inspirational teenagers, both targeted by the Taliban because of their desire to learn. She has struggled a lot for education and now we are trying to struggle like her and to carry the education on. Just a few hours earlier, Ahmed had been discharged from hospital in Birmingham, where over the past month, he's had several operations to save his arm. A gunshot injury sustained in December's attack on his school in Peshawar by the Taliban. 132 children were killed, including his younger brother, Harris, Ahmed survived because he pretended to be dead. They walked through my legs. They put his uh, foot on my leg. Their shoes was very strong. But uh, I feel very pain, but uh, I don't... I try to keep myself quiet because if I shout, then they will kill me. I was very terrified, but I was thinking that uh, uh, I, I have to leave. After the attack, doctors in Pakistan feared the teenager's arm would need to be amputated. The country's government paid for him to be flown to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, where, like Malala, specialists worked to save his life. Now, for the first time, entering the home his family have recently made here in the Midlands. He says he won't let the ordeal stop him striving to learn. I want that my hand become well soon that I go to school and I start again my education. Pin is more powerful than bullets. We are not scaring of terrorists. Our pins are most important, most powerful and most important than their bullets. Now when we see strong boys, strong children like Ahmed who are still committed to continue their education, who want to go forward, who still have their dreams and who believe that their dreams can come true and that is through education. So this gives me hope that we can see the change and we can see that uh, a change is going to come in our society and we will soon see every child getting quality education. Ahmed's been told it'll take a year of therapy to get his arm back to full use. He hopes one day to become an army officer to protect others against the threat of terror. And like Malala, ensure children can go to school with peace of mind. Nancy Cole, ITV News. And you can see more on Ahmed's story on the national news, which uh, follows us this evening. Rape reporting to West Midlands Police has increased by 25% in the last year. 
1,115 people contacted the force since last April with allegations of rape. That's up by around a quarter on the same period 12 months ago. Police attribute the increase to recent high-profile cases of historic sexual abuse where victims have come forward, often resulting in successful prosecutions. Those who work with survivors of sexual assault say a change in police attitudes has also helped. We've now got dedicated teams who specialise in dealing with domestic rape and all other aspects of sexual assault. So what we can offer is there will always be a specialist on duty 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and that's how much we the importance that we place on getting somebody to that victim at an early stage. So firstly we can protect them, get them out of that situation, but then actually start taking them through the process of gathering evidence. Sometimes people have lived with the, the trauma of what happened to them for months, years, even decades. So it can become increasingly hard to come forward. And something that we're always very keen to do is to is to emphasise to people that they that they will get exactly the same service, in fact, if, if not even a more sympathetic service, if they come forward after having suffered years or decades of, of uh, having to live with what happened to them. News in brief now, and Warwick University has entered the top 100 times higher education reputation rankings for the first time. The university made it into the 81 to 90 band. 12 UK universities feature with Harvard at number one. The number of new houses coming onto the market in the West Midlands saw a dramatic fall last month. It's according to the latest Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors uh, housing market survey, which found 17% more surveyors reported a decline in supply. Meanwhile, Birmingham City Council is looking for £9 billion worth of investment to meet a target of 80,000 new homes by 2031. 40 major brownfield sites have already been identified. Now, last night we reported on the work of our troops, including some from two Mercian regiments, who are working alongside soldiers from other United Nations countries to help keep the peace in Cyprus. Well, since the 70s, a demilitarised buffer zone has divided the Turkish-controlled north and the Greek-run south of the island. Violence is rare, but British troops need to be ready to act in case tensions flare up. Our correspondent David Wood joined some of the troops in training. This is aggression and anger the troops are always ready for. Although rioting isn't common on the island, with no agreement in sight between the Turkish and Greek Cypriots, it is a constant threat and is something UN forces must prepare for. But for British soldiers more used to combat operations, using shields and batons is something new. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's different from normal soldiering. It's quite hot and sweaty, but it gets you in the thick of it. Something different to what you'd be doing if you were on tour elsewhere? Yeah, completely different. Oh, it's, you get adrenaline blast sometimes. It's different from everyday soldiering. Whilst this is just training, it's designed to be as realistic as possible. The soldier's role is to face the threat head on and bring the situation under control. And you can see just how aggressive this could get, but this is more than just training. Here, British troops are working alongside soldiers from Hungary, Slovakia and Argentina, who would normally be patrolling other parts of Cyprus's buffer zone. We've always got one platoon who are on, so 22 packs, um, on two hours notice to move at any time. We've got some personnel from Sector 2 who are going to play the role as the protesters. For the purposes of this demonstration, We've only got 11 personnel, however, in reality, we might face crowds of up to 800. In stark contrast, training takes place outside Nicosia's deserted airport terminal. The place saw some of the most intense fighting in the 1970s and now lies abandoned in the heart of the buffer zone. But the relics of a busy airport are still clear. It gives a sense of the division on this island and troops are permanently on standby should tensions rise again. David Wood, ITV News, Nicosia. Now the national and international news is a few moments away. Let's have a look at what's coming up this evening with the details. Here's Mary Nightingale. Nigel Farage comes under fire for suggesting race equality laws should be scrapped. The UKIP leader claims he has been misinterpreted, but opponents say the comments are shocking. And the Duchess of Downton, Kate meets the stars of the hit ITV show. We'll do John Alistair Stewart and me for that and more at the earlier time of 6.15.
A former jockey turned racehorse trainer from Worcestershire is preparing for his first ever runner at the Cheltenham Festival tomorrow. David Dennis began training horses in 2013. He has 23 winners to his name already this season and his horse Roman Flight has been in training for the last 18 months and has won two races so far. Cheltenham is the pinnacle for all racehorse owners and trainers. Uh, to even have a runner there is, is a success in itself. To, to get there with one with a bit of a chance is even better. Uh, realistically, he has his luck in running and things go to plan. He's, he's good enough if, if he gets his luck on the day, hopefully. And it's been announced that uh, jockey A.P. McCoy is to ride in the Midlands Grand National in Utoxeter on Saturday. He'll be riding Catching On, uh, trained by John Joe O'Neill. The remains of a church where King Richard III's body was laid out is the centrepiece of De Montfort University's new heritage centre. Two arches from the city's Church of the Annunciation were unearthed in 1935 during extension work and were preserved in the new building's basement in Leicester. Well then, eh? Here's Joe Lobo. What's in store for today? ITV Local Weather, sponsored by Centre Parks. Good evening, and it's been a fairly wet day so far, but that hasn't stopped you guys sending in your snaps. Have a look at this one from Paul Wilde, a lovely flower here in Abbey Meadows. Don't forget, if you've got some great pics you want to set, show off, centralweather at itv.com is the address. We are expecting more rain over the next couple of days. As you can see here, that band of rain is going to be pushing eastwards, but as the high pressure builds in the northeastern parts of the region, that's going to be pushing the rain further, further south, out of our way for a lovely dry weekend. Tonight, first of all, then, that rain is going to linger across many parts of the region, heavy in places. The good news with the cloud is that we are expecting a fairly mild night with temperatures of 4 degrees Celsius to leave a frost-free night. Tomorrow morning that rain is going to continue, heavy in places, before tomorrow afternoon we should see the rain moving further across the region to leave a fairly dry and sunny day in places. Have a great day. ITV Local Weather, sponsored by Centre Parks. Time for a reminder of tonight's top stories on ITV News Central before we go this evening. A Pakistani boy treated in Birmingham after being shot in the Taliban's deadliest attack on a school has met Malala Yousafzai. 15-year-old Ahmed Nawaz was seriously wounded in the attack in Peshawar in which 132 children died. He told ITV News he won't let the terrorists stop him learning. Rape reporting to the West Midlands Police has increased by nearly 25% in the last year. 1,115 people contacted the force since last April with allegations. Police attribute the increase to successful prosecutions in high-profile cases of historic sexual abuse. And a former jockey turned racehorse trainer from Worcestershire is preparing for his first ever runner at the Cheltenham Festival tomorrow. And that's it from us tonight. The national and international news is on next. We're back with the Lake Bulletin at 10.30. But for now, from the team, bye-bye. Goodbye.